Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Manscaped has the revolutionary electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0. It's cordless, it's waterproof, and it's guaranteed not to nick or snag your nuts or your chest because you can use it upstairs and downstairs. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. You touched upon something that is really interesting to me. So Mm -hmm. you talked about how sometimes getting hardened scenes Mm -hmm. or maybe like when you say leaking, you mean like pre-cum? Yeah. Yeah. I um, wasn't sure how much, how vulgar. Oh, you can be as vulgar as you want. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Cool. Don't, there's no censoring. It's fine. Perfect. Um, what do you mean by that? And, and why so? Is it, yeah, you, I'm not going to. No, no, no. I'm not good. going to assume. I'm going to let you tell me how no, you feel about that. No, yeah. Um, I think it's, it, well, I know exactly where it comes from and I know exactly what it um, feeds into. And I think just for me, um, I still, even though I'm much happier than I was, I think for a lot of trans people, like bottom dis, like dysphoria with your genitals right. is, is, um, very strong and very mm-hmm. prevalent. And for a long time, all throughout, even all throughout high school, I, I said, as soon as I'm 18, as soon as I get out, I'm going to get the surgery, mm-hmm. the surgery. Everyone mm-hmm. says the surgery, um, and that's going to be the thing that's going to complete me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, that's when I'm going to feel happy about myself. That's when I'm going to feel like who I am. And that's what, that's what's going to make me. And I worked diligently, um, throughout high school to get all the paperwork and all the things done so I could get my surgery as soon as I be- turned 18. And when I turned 18 with my provider, um, one of my nurses left. So I got put into a black hole which essentially when nurses leave their job, sometimes there are patients who are forgotten and don't get transferred over to another care patient or mm-hmm. the, you know what I'm saying. Provider, yeah. Another provider. Um, I was one of those people that got lost in the mix. And so for that year up from the time I was 18 to the time I was 19, I was calling them incessantly about these appointments that I needed to do and all these different things. And, um, <clears throat> it was it was also a painful experience for me getting ready to do this like with the pri- provider that I had um it was required to get electrolysis on my genitals mm-hmm. for the surgery which is different which is a form of hair removal mm-hmm. which is far different from laser so interesting yeah so laser is like it's like a they use like literally a light mm-hmm. and they click it and it feels like a little rubber band snap sometimes mm-hmm. it's a little stronger for a mm-hmm. lot for some people but um, it's just a light that basically kills the follicle in that stage of growth. And there's mm-hmm. many different stages, so you have to do it multiple times. But laser is not permanent. And it only gets it gets rid of a lot, but it only gets rid of so much. Electrolysis is the only f- known form of hair removal that is permanent. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they take a single needle and they put it into the follicle of the hair. And so they put it in your skin and they shock the follicle and then until it's dead and then they pluck it out. Oh, that sounds significantly more painful Very and painful. also much more time consuming, right? Very time consuming. I actually didn't realize there was a difference between the two. So you just educated me. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's what, that's a big thing is that like, it's, it's very, it's very painful. Yeah. Um, and so I would have to go on these like two hour long sessions and, you know, they, of course they give you numbing and they do all these things, but numbing can only do so much, especially yeah. that is such a sensitive area. There are so yeah. many nerves that aren't really ever touched. It's not, it's not going to hurt me if I do my yeah. arm. Cause even if I'm not constantly hitting my arm, I'm constantly rubbing it with yeah, t-shirts yeah, yeah. and jackets, you know, there, there's not as much sensory there, but that's a very, very sensitive place. And it hurt. Like I remember I was like on, like I was, I had to be drugged up. I was like on Norco's with numbing cream. And like, I I had to be like basically knocked out for them to do it. And I have a high pain tolerance. Mm -hmm. I have a very high pain tolerance. So there came a certain point, especially after I was trying to get them to hurry the surgery along that I was like, this is not even worth it anymore. And I started porn and I started to be finally more okay with myself. And I kind of was able to detach that from, for me in my head. And I think for a lot of people, not trans, but also trans that like, that's what makes you a woman mm. is the idea that like, well, 
you know, you're not going to be a full woman until you have a vagina. You're not right. going to be a full woman until you have the full package. Right. And I think it was a whole experience of unlearning that and being able to separate that in my head, which I still struggle with, um, because there are other medical anomalies. And I like to break down for a lot of people, for a lot of people who don't understand or who have very specific views because they're religion or, you know, they're very scientific. They think that um, a lot of people believe that, you know, it's just, it's male and female and that's, that's it. And that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are mixes up in between that and Mm -hmm. there are chromosomes that get messed up and there's making a child is such a, crazy process Mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people don't understand um, all the chemicals and all, all the different things that have to come together to be able to make a child. Right. And there are people who are born with amalgamations of, you know, different parts or, or, or have different sex characteristics that aren't just male or just female. Mm -hmm. And so that's my thing that I have to explain to people is that, um, it's very much a mental thing. Mm -hmm. And there have been studies done that trans people, there's a certain formation that um, all of our brains are made in, right? Mm -hmm. And male and female brains are formed differently. And there was a study done that trans people, their brains are formed closer or, you know, are, are formed like the sex that they identify with as opposed to the sex that they're born with. Right. So for me, it was learning to detach the penis Mm -hmm. (laughs) from the lady. Yeah. Because for me, that's what I thought. I was like, I'm not, I'm never going to be a woman unless I have a vagina, but it's, it's about experience. I've learned is that like, that's going to make me a woman. But then I look out in the world and I walk out every day and I go and I talk to different people and I go to these restaurants and people, you know, refer to me as she Mm -hmm. and, you know, which is the pronoun I identify with, Mm -hmm. but I'm, and that there comes another system that comes to play is like, I, I'm lucky and I'm privileged in that sense that I pass Mm -hmm. and not a lot of trans people do. Mm. And, but, but because I do have that, I do have that privilege and I am lucky to have that. I, see on the other side that people aren't referring to me as she and people aren't saying that because they're being nice Mm -hmm. anymore. It's been a long time since I, like someone public has been like, what are you? Like, you know, has said something to me and a lot of people aren't doing it because they're just being kind. A lot of people are doing it because they see me as a woman. Yeah. And so I learned that like, regardless of whether what I view up here, down here, whatever, like Mm -hmm. I live my life as a woman Mm -hmm. and that's another misconception that people should work on unlearning is that like, I'm not a drag queen. Mm -hmm. That's a difference. There are trans women who are drag queens, but Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not taking, there's not a wig that I'm taking off at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. There's not like some reveal, like sure. I don't wake up looking like this, but I wake up looking like this with mascara off. You know what I'm saying? Like wake up looking like this either. Exactly. So like (laughs) there's, I'm not, I'm not faking you out. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to trap you. Yeah. I'm not trying to make you think that I'm anything other than exactly what I am. And I don't feel like I, should have to disclose to every single person that I am trans mm-hmm. because that that is a very intimate part of my life. And I feel like there are not a lot of people who are okay with that. And there are a lot of people who I will meet who are not going to be okay with that, but they'll never know that about me. Right, right. So, so that all ties into like when I do these scenes, I get embarrassed about getting hard because like I almost – and I'm working against it, but yeah. I almost kind of feel like it's unladylike in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I feel very like coy and I feel like very much like I have to hide it. Cause it's like, cause I feel like, Oh, like it's not, sorry. It's, it's I it, that the only way that I can explain it is like, it doesn't, it not ladylike. And it, it seems sometimes like so masculine to me, mm-hmm. which is my own issue that I have to work on, mm-hmm. you know, doing that whole thing. But but that's where that comes from. It's like I, I get embarrassed that my body is working exactly how my body should work right. because of because I've got this thing in my head where I'm like, I this is not like how it's supposed to be. Like yeah. I'm sorry. And that's how I feel even in dating or 
in not even in just scenes in like life. I'm like when I meet a guy or when I'm having sex with a guy off camera, like I'm typically constantly apologizing, like, oh, like I'm sorry. And I'm typically very embarrassed because right. like I feel like that's gotta be so that's gotta be yeah. a fucking struggle. It's I mean, wild. Yeah, I can't I can't imagine you know, it's so easy for like a cisgender person like myself mm-hmm. to just be like I'm a woman and I identify as a woman and this is an easy thing, but I can't imagine being born into a male body feeling the way that I feel and like the struggle that Mm -hmm. that must, that that must be. I mean, that's just like, that's just, so, you know, I really commend you on being so open and talking about it and educating people, you know, like myself who, who don't really understand who mm. don't understand what it's mean. It's like to be trans, right. and, you know, so many, and it's only something that we've sort of recently talking about and being open about. Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Their lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that will not only not nick or snag your nuts, but can also be used on your chest hair. If you get it in the perfect package 3.0, it will come with a bunch of liquid formulas to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day. And for a limited time, you can also get a free travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs that come with it. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.